Okay. So we want to do our review today um, for this quiz. There's a lot of stuff here. There's quite a few formulas that you do need to know as part of the review. So that's probably the biggest challenge of Chapter 11 is, is making sure you know and keep straight all your formulas. I mean, there's really not that many of them, but sometimes people do get a little confused. So like doing area when it asks for circumference and vice versa, that's a classic mix-up when it comes to formulas, is the area formula and the circumference formula. So be, before we even really get going on the review, let's just kind of take a look at that. Oh, do I have a blinky light? I have no light whatsoever. Well, that's a problem. There we go. That's much better. All right. So let's just review very quickly. The circumference of a circle is pi times diameter or uh, 2 pi r is the way you learned it before. Now, again, I prefer the pi times diameter because it's a little harder to confuse that one. The area of a circle is pi r squared. And r squared is not the same as 2r except when r equals 2. That's the only time that a number squared is the same as 2 times the number when that number is 2. For any other number, r squared and 2r are not the same thing. So keep that in mind. Also remember units, okay? This is plain units. This is just units, whatever it is, feet, meters, inches. Area is always units squared. You have to have the units because you need context with any type of area or length problem. Okay, you always have to put it in the right context. Saying the area is 35 means nothing because 35 what? Okay, 35 square meters, 35 square inches, 35 square miles. Give me context. So whenever we do an area or a circumference problem or a sector or something like that, don't forget your units. Because if you forget your units on the quiz, there is going to be a point deduction. Okay? So don't forget that tomorrow. Um, then for the other formula that we used, and it's really the same formula, is angle, central angle, over 360 equals, and this is for either sector area or arc length. We use the same formula. It's just that we change what goes on over here. If we're doing area, it's the sector over pi r squared, the total area. Or if we're doing arc length, it's the arc over pi times diameter. Okay? But either way, it's the part of the circle over the whole circle equals the part of the circle over the whole circle. Okay, the sector is a part of the circle, the pi r squared is a whole circle. The arc length is part of the circle, the circumference is a whole circle. It's the same formula both times, it's just what do you put down here? Is it pi r squared or pi times diameter? And again, the reason we use that proportion is because um, my unknown is not always the sector area. Sometimes it could be the radius, sometimes it could be the angle, sometimes it could be the area. Our unknown could be anywhere there. So those are the those are two of the big formulas, or three of the big formulas that we use in this chapter. We got to keep straight. All right, that much done. Find the circumference of the circle. Estimate when appropriate. Circumference is simply pi times the diameter. Now I am perfectly fine with leaving answers in terms of pi. when it comes to just finding the circumference. So here, the radius of the circle is 4.8 kilometers, which means the diameter is 9.6 kilometers. So if I do the whole diameter, that's going to be 9.6 kilometers. So my circumference is simply 9.6 pi kilometers. Now, because there's a decimal here, we normally do approximate that. 
I would not mark you down for just leaving it 9.6 pi. If you left it there, that would be fine. I would be perfectly happy with that answer. But you are, it's certainly not inappropriate to decimally approximate at that point because there's already a decimal in the problem. So if you did 9.6 times 3.14, or 30.144 kilometers. Okay. For number two, what's my circumference going to be? 31.4. Okay. But here I don't have any decimals originally in the problem, do I? So here it really isn't appropriate to decimally approximate. There's no need to do so. Here we did because there was a decimal already in the problem. That's kind of one of the ways we tell. And I was fine with leaving it. But here I would definitely be looking for 10 pi meters. If you gave me the 31.4, that's kind of where approximation isn't necessary. And I might take off like a half point because there's no reason to approximate it there. Because it's actually not 31.4 meters. It's 31.4 blah, 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 blah. It's way more than 31.4. 31.3.14159265, 5, et cetera. It's all those digits. Just a decimal place moved over one. But 10 pi captures that perfectly, the full value. Not, it's not an approximation. So don't approximate if you don't have to. Um, find the area of the circle. So now we've got to switch gears. We've got to pay attention to what the question's asking on this quiz. So we use the right formula. So when it says area, area, you might want to circle. I mean, strategies you can use on a test like this. That work really well. When I read the instruction, I say find the area. I say, oh, area. And the first thing I do is I write down the formula I'm going to use with that. That reminds me to switch gears from circumference to area. So like on this first set, when I said find the circumference, I might have, if I'm taking a test, I circle that word circumference and I write the formula down that I need to use. So I know what I'm doing. It helps keep me focused on what it is I'm doing so I don't use the wrong formula. Okay? This tells me that I know that I've read it. I know what I'm finding. I know what formula to use. Now we go ahead. So this one, we do pi times 6.4 squared. Now remember, it's just the 6.4 that's getting squared. Order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, then exponents before multiplying, right? So I only square the, the formula, it's the R that gets squared, not, it's not parentheses pi R in squaring that product. So anything that gets squared is a 6.4. And I'm gonna, since that's already a pretty big decimal, I'm gonna use my decimal approximation times 3.14. And I get 128.6. Point six and the units is yards squared. How about number four? What's the critical value that we're going to need for the formula? We need to find what measurement? The radius. What do we know? Well, what do we know? Okay, we know the diameter. We need to find the radius, which we just divide by two to get there. That's easy. Okay, so radius is 12. What's 12 squared? So 144 pi kilometers squared. And again, this is a place because we have a nice whole number. It works out super easy. We can just go ahead and do that without approximation. And honestly, it's, it's faster to do it without approximation. I don't need to get a calculator out and punch in times 3.14. You can just leave it like that. And remember, it's the units that are squared. It's not the pi that's squared. It's not the 128.6 is squared. It's the units that are being squared. Okay. Arc length. Again, arc length is a fraction of what measurement? Arc length is a part 
what is the hole that we're looking at? Arc length, is that part of our circumference or our area? Okay. And that's important to know. Because if you you got it, you always gotta be thinking, it's a length. Length, a distance measure, circumference, distance, okay? So we set up our proportion. Okay, arc length. That's part of circumference. Pi times diameter we're gonna use. Okay? And what we do, we have 90 out of 360 degrees equals my arc length, which I don't know, over the circumference, which is pi times diameter, or 22 pi. Now, this is not so bad for solving out, because 90 over 360 reduces very quickly to 1 fourth, right? I cross multiply, I get 22 pi over 4 equals L, or 11 pi over 2, and it's yards, so it's 90 nuts. Now, you could decimally approximate that if you want. Okay? And again, this is one where you probably could have say it's clearly a quarter of the circle, so I'm just going to find the whole circumference and divide it by 4. Right? So this is one where you may not even need the formula because there's enough common sense that goes on with that with 90 out of 360, just one quarter of the circle. I just take the entire circumference and divide by 4, right? So I'm fine with you doing that if you recognize that, but you should show me at least some calculation, not just write down the final answer, just because in case you make a mistake, I want to see what you've done. So I can have a chance for partial credit. Uh, here, a little trickier because it's 135. That's not as nice of an angle. In reality, it's not bad. That's three-eighths of the circle. But probably most of you are not recognizing 135 as three-eighths of a circle at this point. You'll get that in trick. Guys, can we please not put our heads against the wall? Thank you. All right. So, again, we set up angle 35. Getting ahead of myself. Equals arc length over what's it going to be over? What's the circumference? 24 pi. Yeah. And again, because the arc length is unknown, I could just multiply both sides by 24 pi, algebra wise. To cancel that out, so I get 24 times pi times 135 over 360 equals my arc length, and we'll probably approximate that, right? I, mean, I could do it without approximating, but it gets to be a bit of a fraction mess. So 24 times 3.14 times 135 divided by 360. And 28.26 we get. And then we put in our units. And it's a length, so just straight up kilometers. Now we work it a little different where they give you the arc length and they want the arc measure. Now I know some of you are still a little confused between the two. The arc measure is the angle. The arc length is the feet or kilometers or meters or whatever unit we give it. Okay? So when they want the arc measure, they're looking for the angle. This is why we use our proportion because that's what's unknown right now. I don't know what my angle is. I do know my arc length. And I do know my circumference because that's going to be 22 pi, right? Or 22 times 3.14, 69.08. And that's why we use that uh, proportion formula is because if the unknown, you know, we're so used to the unknown being the arc length, 
but sometimes the unknown is in a different spot. And the proportion always works. We just fill in what we know, and there's usually just one unknown, and we can easily cross multiply and solve for that. So um, this one I can solve for x by just multiplying both sides by 360. I don't have to do the full cross multiply. So 46.1 times 360 divided by 69.08 tells me that angle is 240.2 degrees. Okay. And again, units are important. The units are degrees here because it's in, because that's that angle, that's the arc measure, is measured in degrees. Same here, it says find the circumference of this circle. It's the same formula, but now my unknown is going to be the circumference, right? I know the angle over 360. I know the arc length. I don't know the circumference. Now, since the x is on the bottom, I do have to cross multiply. I get 210x equals 360 times 62.3, and then divide by 210. So I've got a little bit of algebra to do there. But 360 times 62.3 divided by 210, 106.8. And my unit is kilometers. Okay. Just making sure I put my numbers in there. So again, showing this setup very important. So you can expect that there are going to be problems. Yes, where the arc length is unknown, but just like we've been going for months now. The review is very much like the quiz, which means you can expect there are going to be some problems where the arc length is not the unknown, where the arc length is given, and it's either the circumference or the angle that's unknown. But any way we set this proportion up, there's always just going to be one unknown. Uh, sector area works exactly the same way. It's just now we're going to find the area pi r squared. Okay. We're going to have to work with that. Right? Mm -hmm. So again, notice I circled the area. I wrote the formula because I'm reading the instructions and knowing what I'm doing without having to just look at the problem and trying to figure it out without reading the instructions. Same formula. 45 over 360 equals sector area, which is S, over what is going to go down here now? What formula, what measurement is going to go down here in the denominator? Pi r squared, or in this case, that would be 169 pi, because 13 squared is 169. So we got 169 times 3.14 times 45 divided by 360. And I get 66.3. And it's miles squared because it's an area, right? How are we going to set this one up? What's going to go on the top of the first set fraction? What, what am I going to use? 225 over what? 360, that's part over whole. The area is what's unknown, so I'll just call it X, doesn't have to be an S. Over what's going to go down here? Area. area of the circle, which would be pi times, nope, pi times 18 squared. And 18 squared is 324, right? Okay, and again, I can just multiply both sides by 324 pi. 
So times 3.14 times 225 divided by 360, and I get 635.85 centimeters squared. Okay. Now we get to the composite figure. There's almost always going to be one like this, where we have a composite figure, we have to do multiple things. And so we have to come up with a strategy before we begin. Okay. So what I need to do, I've got a big circle and two small circles. It kind of looks like a bald-headed Homer Simpson looking up over a piece of paper, doesn't it? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Um, but I've got a big circle and two small half circles. So a big half circle. So to find the shaded area, I'm going to have to find the area of half the big circle. So one half the area of the big circle minus, and here I've got a half small circle and half small circle of the same size. So two halves make one whole, right? So minus the area of the small circle. And because there are two halves, it makes just one whole. I don't have to write it twice, right? So to find the area of the big circle, I need the radius of the big circle. All we're told is that this radius of the small circle is two centimeters. So what's the radius of my big circle? It's going to have to be four centimeters. Okay, so the area of the big circle is pi times 16. I'm going to subtract from that the area of the small circle, which has a radius of 2, so pi times 2 squared. Half of 16 is 8 pi. This is 4 pi equals 4 pi centimeters squared. And actually, it works out really nice in terms of pi. I don't have to, I don't have to multiply in the 3.14 if I don't want to, because everything works out really nicely. In reality, it's not that hard of a problem if I can come up with a strategy in my mind to work with. Take the largest area, subtract the holes, basically. One face of the problem like that. And 4 pi is like 12.56 or something like that, or centimeter squared if you did it decimally. All right, now we get into the polygons. Polygons require a whole different set of thought, thoughts, but our main equation we're using here is the area is the perimeter times the apothem divided by 2. So the two facts that we need to know in order to find the area of a polygon is the perimeter of the polygon, the length of the apothem of the polygon. Once I know that, I'm all set. In this case, everything's set up for me. Okay, not every problem is going to require us to solve triangles and do do stuff with it. Here I'm given the length of a side and I'm given the apothem. The apothem is 14.5. Okay. What's the perimeter? Well, I've got how many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. And that polygon. And how long is each side? 14. Seven times 14 is 98, right? So there's my perimeter. Now, there weren't units given in these problems, so when units are not given, we still need to give some unit with our answer. You can make one up, or you can just do U for units. You can write units. Um, I tend to write centimeters just because it's a super easy one to write. But you can write whatever unit you want if one is not given. So 98. 
let me try, 98 times 14.5 divided by 2, 710.5, and I'm going to call it centimeters squared. It's an area, so it's units squared. That's all it takes. So don't automatically think when you see a polygon problem that it's going to be you have to set up and solve a triangle every single time. Sometimes you will. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes it will require trig. Sometimes it's just Pythagorean theorem. you got to take each one as it comes along and use the strategy that is most appropriate. Like I say, one of the best things about having Unit 11 here at the end is that we are reviewing for the final exam every time we do a problem, it seems like. Because we incorporate so many things about triangles and other shapes that we've dealt with in the past. So it's constantly reviewing. All right, in this one, they give us the radius is 10.6 and the apothem is 10. So I know from my area formula, I already have the apothem is 10. I need the perimeter, but I don't have the length of a side. But what do I have here? I have a radius and I have an apothem, which means I can find this third piece here. which is half of a side. It's not the whole side, it's half of a side, right? But how am I going to solve that? Do I need Sokotoa? No, I know two sides of a right triangle. What do I use when I know two sides of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared plus 10 squared equals 10.6 squared. And remember, the Pythagorean theorem, the way it sets up in one of these shapes, it's always half of a side squared plus apothem squared equals radius squared. That's, I mean, that's the way it's always going to set up. You probably don't have to memorize that, but it just kind of helps to know that that's the way that right triangle always works. So I get a squared plus 100. I don't know what 10.6 squared is off the top of my head. I know that shocks you. It's 112.36. So a squared equals 12.36. So I got to take the square roots of 12.36, 3.5 approximately. Let's say 3.52. Take the two decimal places. Now, that's 3.52. Is that the number that goes up here in the formula? No. Okay. 3.52 is just that piece there. The whole side is 7.04. And how many sides do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides. So. 63.36. And now I can put that in my formula. 316.8. And again, we'll use centimeters. So a little bit more work. We had to front load and, and solve a triangle before we could figure it out. Is that the only way to do this using that formula? Absolutely not. Okay, you could alternatively use these facts to find the area of this triangle, and then double that to find the, and then, well, actually double it to find the area of this triangle and multiply that area by 9, or, mul or find the area of the small triangle times 18, if you want, because they're 18, exact, 18 identical small triangles, because there are nine sides, twice as many as that. So you could do, do base times height divided by 2, and then multiply that by 18, and you get the same answer. OK? Uh, here I'm given a hexagon, and all I'm given is the apothem is 9. Oh, dear. OK. Um, so again, setting up my formula, perimeter times apothem divided by 2. The perimeter is what I'm going to need, so I'm going to have to solve this triangle. Now it's a hexagon, so 
So hexagons are kind of nice because this angle is going to be 60 degrees. And this angle is going to be 30. So I really don't have to use trig, although I certainly can. But this is what I need to know down here. And I could use either angle I want for this situation, or I could use special triangles. My guess is you're going to use trig. And let's use this angle up here, the 30. So this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. So tangent of 30 is opposite over adjacent. So 9, tan 30 equals m. And we just put that in our calculator. 9, tan of 30 gives me 5.2 approximately. Answer makes sense. So that's 5.2. Do I put 5.2 up here? No. This would be 10.4 then. And so all the way around it would be 62.4. Uh, Yeah, 62.4. Times 9 divided by 2, 280.8. We've got our area. Okay. Finally, I have a hexagon again, one, two, three, four, five, six, but this time given the radius. Now, what's unique about a hexagon? Every triangle inside the hexagon is what kind of a triangle? Okay, but the whole triangle is equilateral, isn't it? So that means if the radius is 26, this side is 26, and that's 26 also, because hexagons are unique. Now, I can't. did I give you the special formula for the area of a hexagon? If you know a side, you want a special formula that you can use? That's how you find the area of a hexagon if you know a side. You could go through and work everything, but I know the side is 26, so I could just go equal 3 times 26 squared times the square root of 3 over 2. 26 squared is 676, so multiply that by 3, 2028. So 1014. Root 3 units squared. That's my area. All done. Um, I'm not sure you're going to be have a chance to, but that is a unique formula you could use. We could also go back and use our SOHCAHTOA to approximate that for our special triangle. Okay. I could pull out my triangle. 30 degrees here, 90 degrees here. This is 13. This is 26. If you remember your special, special triangles, this is going to be 13 root 3, or you could use trig to find that either way. Yes? You also use the 30, 60 formula, technically, since 26 is on the hypotenuse. Yeah, that's what I did right here. Yep, and now my opossum is 13 root 3. So you get perimeter times opossum divided by 2, and you're going to get exactly the same number. Okay? Hexagons are a little bit unique and actually tend to be a little bit easier because of the 30, 60, 90 triangle situation. You do not have to have that formula memorized, but it could be a helpful one to have carrying around in your hip pocket. Um, this is definitely a more complicated one because this is a one, two, three, four, five, six septagon or heptagon. Okay, 
or a seven gun. All right. Now we know the perimeter. The perimeter is 35 times the apothem divided by two. So we just need to find the apothem. So what am I going to do? I'm going to pull out my triangle, my right triangle, just like I always do. This is half a size, so that's 2.5. I do have to figure out what this angle is going to be up here. Okay, that's half of this central angle. That was a terrible central angle, by the way. Okay. So this angle, again, is 360 divided by the number of sides. So 360 divided by 7 is 51.428, etc. But this is only half that angle, right? Because my blue triangle is half of my triangle. Okay, so half of that, divide that by 2, and I get 25.7 degrees. I need to know the apothem. So we use a tangent in this case because opposite adjacent, tangent of 25.7 equals opposite over adjacent. Oh dear, my variables in the denominator. How do we handle that? We swap. Okay, so the apothem equals 2.5 divided by tangent 25.7. The other thing I could do is I could switch to this angle by doing a triangle sum of the 180, and then it might variable be in the numerator. That's another option. So 2.5 divided by the tangent of 25.7 gives me 5.2. And now we just plug that in. I don't have to multiply that out because that is the apothem. I got 35 times 5.2 divided by 2, 91. Centimeters squared. Okay. The polygons, we got to be able to solve that right triangle. I mean, that's really the key, one way or another. You have to know the formula, too. The formula itself is simple. Perimeter times the positive divided by 2, that's easy. But we have to know how to find those values, and that can be tricky. Finally, the really easy part, identify. Is it a prism, cylinder, cone, or sphere, or a pyramid? should be included there, too. What is this? What shape is the base of that prism? No. Triangle. In a prism, the base is always a non-rectangular side unless they're all rectangles. Okay, technically that is a right triangle prism because that's the base. What's the second one? Is it? Yeah, it's a cone. When I cut and pasted the picture, the top got cut off. But if we actually left it like this with a not going to a peak, it would be a frustrum. You don't, you don't need to know that. That's okay. But that's what they call that shape. It's a cone with the top cut off. It's called a frustrum. Okay. What's this one? Another triangle prism. Equilateral triangle prism, actually, isn't it? Okay. But all you have to do is say prism, cylinder, cone, or sphere on those problems. What are these again? The first one is a cone. Prism, cone, prism. Okay. A cylinder is a prism basically with a circular base. Technically, it's not a prism because it has a circle. Prisms have to have polygon basis, but all the same formulas will apply to it, so we'll treat it as such. All right. Make sure you know how to do these things, because this is what the quiz is tomorrow. If you need extra help, come in and see me. I will be in for a little bit after school today, as well as before school tomorrow, as well as Learning Center, second hour, 
or anybody in the Learning Center pretty much all day long. I'll also make sure that you have, if you, I will be checking your, I don't have time right now, I got a couple minutes, but I really don't have time to get, it, get to everybody, but I need to check your homework check-in sheets to see what you have done. So do try to, uh, if you have stuff to check in before school tomorrow, get here early so that we can get that done. Okay, I should be here pretty early tomorrow because of the show choir morning. All right.